Africa's news and information leader, June 20, 2013, that is today. Now listen to this, awakening on Friday morning, June 20, 1913, the South African native found himself not actually a slave, but a pariah in the land of his birth. That was according to Saul Blackie. He wrote this about a hundred years ago, uh, following the promulgation of the Natives Land Act. And that is what we're discussing here on the program this morning. We're looking back at the Natives Land Act the legacy thereof and how to reverse that particular legacy. Let me quickly introduce my guests on the program. Mdu Shabane is the Director General uh, of the Rural Development and Land Reform Department. Also on the line for me this morning, uh, Ruth Hall, Associate Professor of Institute for Poverty, Land and Agrarian Studies at the University of the Western Cape. Paulani, um, I would argue it's, it's wrong to talk about the legacy of the Act because there are so many legacies and I think that um, on the one hand, uh, the legacy of the act is a highly gendered legacy. What it set up were native reserves that became actually what many people considered labor reserves, labor sending areas uh, under the migrant labor system, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, essentially the labor of women in farming, in reproducing the next generation, in keeping families together, enabled um, young men to go off and work in the mines, live in single-sex hostels. This was a highly gendered system. Um, and so, uh, and one still sees it, and patterns of migration have shifted, but still uh, there is a greater predominance of, of women in the communal areas. Uh, and I, I think it's actually quite refreshing that we're, we're focusing on gender uh, and looking at gender and race uh, in, in combination. I think that that's productive. But I think that uh, it's also important to bear in mind when we talk about um, the legacy or legacies of the Act is that um, it's not an entirely rural legacy. Um, the legacy sits in the cities as well. It enabled the accumulation of wealth in cities. Many of the people affected and driven into poverty through this act are in the cities. Uh, much of the wealth that was accumulated on commercial farms has now moved up. Uh, so a huge amount has changed, not just since 1913, between 1913 and 1994, but even since 1994, a lot of the wealth built up in commercial farming areas has moved either into our cities or even out of the country. So I think that, you know, the legacy is a complex one, um, and one needs to think about it at multiple levels. Firstly, there's uh, the material legacy of dualism, really the two sides of our economy, the two sides of the countryside that look so very different. Um, and the function of land reform there is to blur the divide between the communal areas and the commercial farming areas. And I think that that's at the heart of this land reform debate. Um, what kind of new patterns of settlement, of land holding, who should be getting the land? Um, how, or should we be subdividing large farms? Should people be um, settling more intensively on, on the land in the commercial farming areas? Or should we be um, transforming shareholding of large corporate agriculture, which is increasingly the model that we're seeing in the countryside. So I think that these are some of the core debates, and I would argue that, in fact, um, there isn't a very clear policy framework now to resolve those questions. It is indeed uh, very, very complex. The scenario that uh, Ruth has painted in terms of the, the legacy of this act is quite correct. Uh, the, the ownership patterns are still largely what was uh, left by the 1913 Land Act, especially in inequity throughout the country. The destruction of uh, the fledgling class of black farmers, poverty, inequality in the areas that were reserved primarily for African people, the congestion in the former homelands, basically these are the kind of the challenges that uh, the policy that is emerging through the Green Paper on Land Reform that we have uh, been debating uh, in the last uh, 15 or so months begin to address these, these issues. Of course, one of the things that we are prioritizing right now is to begin to direct the land redistribution program towards decongestion of former communal areas uh, or former homeland areas. There's, there are thousands of smallholder farmers, some of whom are women, that are farming in these areas. 
and and for as long as the opportunities are not created through the land redistribution program for them to graduate from smallholder farmers to medium to and large scale farmers mm. they are going to remain forever small first of all the because of uh, landlessness because of the dispossession of our past as a result of this act you've got a continuum of needs you've got people who will be happy to own a piece of land that they call home you've got a people you've got a group of people who need land to eke out a living to to supplement their income be it a social grant or a remittance or any other form of income you've got people who are aspiring to be farmers who want to primarily derive most of their income from using the land you've got people who are at almost the top end who want to enter they have got some of their own money so our our land reform our land redistribution program has got to cater for that continuum it cannot be singularly focusing on one class uh, of of people certainly what we want to do is that we do want to see a racial deracialization of the current uh, agricultural uh, 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 sector you've got no less than 30,000 uh, commercial farmers in south africa now these are the members of your organized agriculture your agri sa what we want to see through this redistribution process is is the re-emergence of a class of black uh, commercial farmers going going forward but also right. addressing the other let's say we've got two challenges here mm -hmm. historically at the beginning that was the approach where you had a group of people being allocated a farm they all collectively own entitled this farm and this is where you found most of these problems uh, in our redistribution program and I'm saying as we go forward, we are beginning to allocate land to individuals, to families, to small groups uh, that are organized in a particular fashion. This was a reflection of our problematic selection criteria on who do we allocate land to. That, that is one part that we are addressing presently. Precisely, but that, that, is the, that is the continuum of the needs we've got to address. We've got to deal with landlessness. We've got to deal with uh, congested uh, former homelands. We've got to deal to provide opportunities for people who have been trapped in the former reserves, who, who, who are aspirant farmers, who are actually very good farmers. You've got farm workers who are primarily running many of our commercial agricultural farms, but who do not have land of their own given an opportunity through the government's land reform program, they would succeed. You speak to any commercial farmer who on a day-to-day -day basis run their commercial farms. They may not have business skills, but they are very good at farming. This is a, 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 a mistake, rather a limitation in our program from, from 1994. If you, if you look very carefully, the support system that were uncreated and apartheid to uh, support farmers uh, we completely uh, uh, abolished at the beginning uh, of, of, of democracy. You had financial institutions that offered favorable loans to these uh, uh, commercial farmers. You had extension uh, uh, officers, you had uh, uh, corporations or co-ops that uh, primarily provided a lot of support uh, of, uh, uh, to these farmers. Majority of our beneficiaries of land reform have not had this particular benefit um, because of a number of changes in the structure of agriculture in the country, and but partly uh, due, due to uh, the, 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 the liberalization of, 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 the, of the economy. Now, we have realized that to simply chase the target of distributing land without ensuring that people have got proper support is not taking us uh, forward. Okay. Hence, the minister, even in his 